Hello, and uh, welcome to Kerbal Space Program. We're, um, this is going to be a montage. I'm uh, going to be covering basically my first, well, not first, but several missions in the span of this uh, short video uh, that I've clipped together. So um, I wanted to do the moon. That was going to be next. But uh, I also needed to do a flyby, and I also needed to gather some more science. So um, basically, I needed to create, um, with my fairly limited part selection, a uh, rocket that would do a flyby by the moon. That's what we're seeing here. And I mean, it was a little, uh, is the word tribulous? Uh, I think so. <laughs> it's, it was, uh, it actually went okay despite the fact that our rocket was not the most aerodynamic. But um, you can see, I mostly have things figured out. I don't have any upgraded tracking station yet, so I have to do everything by feel and not, I, like I have no ways of like planning things out. If you have never played this game, you eventually get um, methods of like planning out your trajectory and, and your burn time and all of that. but. Uh, I have to do things the old-fashioned way and just kind of eyeball it. So that's what's happening here. I overshot, but it turned out to be a really nice little intercept kind of loop. I kind of looped around the around the moon, uh, which was really good. I basically didn't have to change anything, and I got to collect all of my science. Again, if you've never played this game, uh, it's all about collecting science. Uh, I find the money is almost like secondary, but it does sometimes create an interesting restriction for you and basically limits what you can upgrade. Um, but rarely does it become relevant to like how ambitious my projects are. However, they do actually in the next mission. So after collecting the science uh, with the intercept of the moon, I I think it's called litho break. I'm, I'm not sure. I might have to look that up, but basically, that's when um, you are. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Does this go well? I can't remember. Uh, it's basically when you're using the atmosphere of of the planet to break your your you know to slow down rather than using more delta v. Um, but you know, like everyone knows what happens when something falls into the atmosphere is it gets really bright and, uh, and then it, it crashes, right? And we want to avoid the crashing part for sure. But the bright part is basically the friction. Um, as I understand it, I, I also think there's some uh, like myths or misconceptions about like why something gets really hot when it comes into the atmosphere. But, um, so again, I'm, I'm kind of ignorant on the subject. Anyway, the fly by the moon was very, you know, it was a success. My next few missions are not nearly as clean, but um, I got to work on uh, basically another rocket. I think w th that shot there is me realizing I need more science because I, I wanted to have the fuel ducts. Fuel ducts basically allow, allow you to... Um, share fuel between multiple canisters I was unfortunately under the impression here that if you connected one fuel canister to another just via its side just like on the side they did not share fuel so I was like oh, I need the stupid fuel ducts but I was a hundred percent incorrect about that they totally share fuel so I didn't need to do this extra mission um, but I uh, if you missed it there I, I basically I attempted to intercepts with Minmus to gather, gather some more science, and both of them went fairly badly. Um, one, the first time I missed Minmus, uh, and the second time all of my science blew up, so I basically was unable to collect any of the science, and I got like 15 science there, basically just from the crew report of Minmus, but th that was enough to buy the fuel ducts. Either way, uh, I didn't need the fuel ducts at all. So, but this is me uh, getting my lander ready. So this is the lander I expect to take to the moon. Now, when you're planning something like this, it's pretty it's pretty challenging because you gotta basically plan out um, like separate stages. Like, okay, getting up into the like 
upper atmosphere, then creating an orbit, then getting to the moon, um, then getting back, right? And all of those require in, uh, you know, debatably separate chunks of delta V, right? Because once, you're, once you've spent some fuel in a canister, you kind of want to shed it, which means that you're working with a different shade, uh, sorry, stage. So this, like these giant rockets on the bottom here, are they gonna be like, get us to orbit and possibly partially to the moon. Uh, and then we're gonna have like a second stage that is like, you know, uh, basically land on the moon. But I think what I did here is like, you know, the those giant outside rockets, we, we shed those. And then the second stage is enough to uh, create an orbit and also get us to the moon. And my general plan is I want to have a little tiny bit of the second stage left when I'm descending to the moon. So then I can uh, like shed that last stage on the moon and then I have a completely, uh, you know, fresh last stage, basically the lander um, with enough Delta V to get back. And that way I can plan uh, how much exact delta V I need in the lander in order to get back. And as, as via a lot of trial and error, found out that you need about uh, 1,200. However, you'll see on the left side there, if you're paying very close attention on that one there, I have 1,150, which is just barely enough. Uh, in future missions, I will 100% be increasing it to at least... 1500 if not 2000 I think that 2000 is a lot more comfortable because um, a lot of things went wrong here because I did not have enough Delta V in the lander and I absolutely refused to give up the mission so uh, I do end up saving the game uh, and this is not a hard mode Kerbal career mode uh, basically the difference being that you can quick save and quick load and I really didn't want to have to deal with redoing an entire mission from scratch. Um, I already had to redo quite a lot in this mission. But uh, you can see this first attempt to land on the moon, moon was a little bit shoddy. Uh, I shed it, I, well, I tried to slow uh, approach and burn uh, as I was approaching and I used up a lot of fuel. And uh, I shed the second stage too quickly and then I had to use too much of the lander's fuel and then I tried to lith litho break with the uh, the lander and you can see that didn't go exactly well. Second attempt um, I got a lot better and like a little bit more bold with my approach basically waited a lot longer before I started breaking or you know slowing ourselves down so you can see this shedding of the second stage and then uh, landing that was a lot more clean. You can see how much fuel I ended up with. However, my escape from the moon was really shoddy here because I was like, oh, I don't want to waste any fuel. So I'll do a slow, you know, I'll burn a little bit and then I'll, I'll wait and then I'll burn a little bit. Thinking that it was like how far away from the moon that mattered, it's not. It's how fast you're moving. Um, so I ended up wasting a bunch of fuel and then crashed back at the moon. Third attempt, things I, like I've gotten very used to this like shedding the second stage and then landing like I, I ba used basically no fuel there I decided to save at that point because it was like th three time and this I'm not gonna get much better however our <laughs> escape from the moon more successful but I unfortunately escaped the entire system as well so second attempt to escape the moon this is where things get um, kind of dicey so I didn't really have enough fuel to slow our descent the normal way, so I had to do the litho break method. But as you've seen in previous explosions, litho breaking uh, too aggressively, meaning we dip too far into the atmosphere, meant that our whole ship would flip around and then burn up and explode. So I had to dip very cautiously into the atmosphere, and if you can see, really, really small there is. I'm uh, my periapsis was 60 kilometers um meaning we're just barely dipping then i it was taking really long to to actually do anything so i, I dipped a bit more aggressively and tried like 40,000 or 40 kilometers and that was not enough uh sorry because then we started exploding again so then i had to go back and try again and 
I, I've landed at 50 kilometers being like the perfect magic number of like just enough into the atmosphere that we were slowing down at an acceptable rate that I wouldn't have to sit there for an hour and repeat this process of like slowing down and and then accelerating so that we can you know we don't have to watch ourselves orbit the planet and then slowing down a bit and then waiting and then slowing down again so it was it was a bit it was fast enough but it wasn't so aggressive and uh, you know in the thicker atmosphere that our ship would flip and then explode so then we finally got into an actual descent and uh Unfortunately, because I wanted to save some Delta V, I didn't attach any drogue chutes, which is what you use to slow yourself down enough to use the actual parachutes. But they, they are actually quite heavy. Um, but also, fortunately, we were traveling mostly just sideways, like none of our uh, speed was going sideways. So we were able to actually use our chutes because we could slow down enough. So here's your, your teaser. Next time I'll be doing a lot of satellite missions and then maybe something a bit more ambitious. Anyway, if you uh, enjoyed this uh, little little time capsule of, of all of my missions, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.